Good morning, church. We'll come together and begin our services this morning. Um, the only announcement I remember I was supposed to say is that Brother Jerry asked me to give him the time to say something, and I forgot. So, uh, do you want to come and say something now? That's what he told me to say. He remembered. The chairman of the pastor search committee wants to say something. Um, so they've, they've continued to meet, they're working together, they're in agreement and they're continuing. Remember them in your prayers as they continue to search for our next pastor. Um, I'll read the scripture for us and we'll begin our song service. Uh, this is from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 8. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servants, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his co covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Let's stand together and sing together this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We'll continue our singing hymn number 493, Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my 
Uh, Ms. Doris, uh, give us our Sunday school report, please. Yes. Thank you. I was mentioned to Lamar earlier when we left home, it was uh, 40 degrees, uh, 41 degrees, and we got to Webb, it was 39 degrees. So we, we were heading north and the temperature was going down. So good to see you today. And as Carrie prayed in his prayer, people had to want to come to the church today, didn't you, Carrie? Uh, you could have easily stayed at home, but you chose to come this way, and may the Lord bless and protect you for doing that. Let me just make a couple of observations. Uh, in the bulletin, you note that uh, on our homecoming offering, uh, our goal is three uh, thirty thousand dollars, and uh, there might be some who want to still give this month. We've given a, a wonderful amount, twenty four thousand two hundred dollars, and there might be some that want to still give or give again, and uh, we'd like to reach that goal if at all possible. And one of the primary concerns there was uh, outside equipment for the playground. We have a number of children, uh, young children in our church. We want to provide for them as they grow up and have a wonderful playground area there. Let me also mention that the offering envelopes for uh, 2022 are out in the foyer, and you'll want to pick up those uh, envelopes before you leave today. If there was not a packet there for you and we need to make one for you, uh, just let uh, Gladys or myself know. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, we love you today because you first loved us. We adore your name and the power and grace it represents in our lives today. Lord, we pray that your majesty, your grace, and your glory will fill every heart 
that is present here today. Lord, we confess our sins unto you, and we ask for your forgiveness. We've been selfish, desiring our own way. We refuse to listen to a hurting brother or sister. We confess we've been foolish with pride and self-interest. We confess we've been spiritually lazy. We've not sought your face and your way as we should have. And we ask, O oh Lord God, that you'd please forgive us. Our Father, we are grateful for life and the joys and the friendships and fellowship that's offered us today through this body of Christ. May we not waste any of those opportunities. O oh Lord, our hearts hurt for our brothers and sisters who are sick and in great need today. We pray for those who are facing surgery this week and treatments. We also ask for good news and relief and strength and healing for those who will receive medical reports this week. And we ask for the removal of the COVID virus among us as a nation and a world. Especially, Lord, we ask that you'd please spare our children and bless our children who seem to be so susceptible at this time to the virus. Please protect them. Help us to do all we can to protect them. And we ask that you would guide us as a church family in these important days, especially give wisdom and insight to our pastor search committee. Say, so lead us in finding our next under shepherd. Lord, we trust in you. We love you. And we ask that in the work that we do in Jesus' name, that we honor the Lord Jesus and be a blessing to the community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time we'll continue our singing with hymn number 526, the solid rock. Christ is our solid rock, our firm foundation. He's faithful to his word, and we know that he'll be faithful from the past and into the future. Let's sing together and sing hymn number 526, the solid rock.
Thank you for this day. We thank you for an opportunity to come together, to sing songs together to you um, and about you and what you've done for us and who you are. Um, I pray that you would uh, be with us as we continue in the service, that we would understand your word and be able to worship you as we hear the truth of your word. And we pray you'd be with, uh, with those who have gathered here today to uh, make much of you. I pray you'd help us to know you. Um, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Brother Jerry reminded me, um, my granddad's here, so if you want to talk to somebody who's been alive since 1931, uh, you could do that, and he'd love to talk to you and ask you all kinds of questions about where you're from and who you're related to and all that. He's an amateur historian, is what he is. He likes to know where stuff came from and all that. He's from Geneva County, um, down close to the Florida line, so uh, Royce Coker is his name. Proud to have him here with us this morning. If the children want to go with Brother Aaron... Y'all can go and have kids' church, and we'll have grown-up church in here. Thank you, Brother Cody, and thank you, Belinda. It's so nice to have uh, Grandfather with us today. Bless you. Thank you for coming and being here. Uh, there's another congregational friend here with us today. Uh, Shelby Jean, we're glad to have you here today. She's a lifetime friend of many of us who are here, and it's a joy to have you in our worship service today. Uh, she has been a friend of mine uh, all of our lives, and then her daughter and my, our, Jeremy and my daughter are good friends and stay in close contact with one another. Again, it's so good to see you today. I never thought we'd have this many in worship service today. Uh, I started calling this city to come to my house, but I didn't, I, didn't know, I, didn't know, I didn't know this many of you would brave the weather. Lord bless you. Thank you for doing it. And may you be blessed for doing it. Thank you, Brother Cody and Belinda, again, for good music. That's such an important, important part of our worship service. If you would take your Bibles and turn to John 14, and they, we've got some sermon sheets. If I don't know, have the notes been passed out already? Let's go ahead and do that now. We'll pass those out. Uh, if you're helping with that, uh, let's get those passed out.
if this is new to you, we, uh, I provide some sermon notes for those who'd like to have them, and uh, uh, you can just take those and fill it in there as we go. Helps keep me on track a little bit. We'll be looking at John chapter 14, a, a very, very interesting chapter. And be John 14, 12 through 14. We're looking today at praying in Jesus' name. Praying in Jesus' name. Anyone else need a copy of the notes we got around okay with that? All right. Thank you, folks, for helping with that. The Apostle John was a good friend of Jesus. Good friend of Jesus. Uh, he's referred to, we believe, as the beloved disciple. He never refers to himself by name, but he speaks of the beloved disciple, and we believe that that's John who wrote these words that we're looking at today, John 14, 12 through 14. I'll, I'll read these verses now. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do the works I do. Yes, he will do even greater ones, for I'm going to the Father. Isn't that interesting? That's a good Labor Day sermon. Jesus said, I, I've done great works, you're going to do greater works because I'm going to the Father. Greater works. Now, that's not greater works qualitatively, but it is quantitatively. Obviously, there are more of us. He says, there will be more works because I'm going to the Father. Well, what difference does it make that he's going to the Father? He tells us in verse 13. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. Why do we pray in Jesus' name? For the Father's glory to be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Now there's a tricky verse for you. There's a tricky verse for you. We're talking about take things out of context. If you take that verse out of context, you're in trouble. You've got to see that verse in total context of what Jesus is saying. He's talking about praying in Jesus' name. He says, if you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it in my name. Praying in Jesus' name. This is the word of God, and blessed be the name of the Lord. When you pray, do you pray in the name of Jesus? Does it matter how you close your prayer? Does it matter to you how you close your prayer? Do you think about how you close your prayer? How about when you have thanks at home, at the table? How do you close that prayer? Is it possible to pray a vain prayer and not realize it? I think so. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that the main thing to consider in praying is not the number of words or where you pray or how you're dressed. The main thing is consider is your attitude. What's your motivation? And I think it's very possible to pray a vain prayer and not realize it. I'm going, to, I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't believe there's a person here this morning, including me, that had prayed a vain prayer at one time or another. Either our heart wasn't in it, our mind wasn't in it, our soul wasn't in it, our action wasn't in it. But for some reason or another, we prayed a vain prayer. What did Jesus say about praying vain prayers? He said, yea, they have their reward. They have their reward. Does God hear all of our prayers? Does God hear all of our prayers? How can he answer our prayers? He can say yes. He can say no. He can say wait. He can say maybe. I've got a friend who says he can say, are you kidding? Sometimes when we pray. But God listens. And we're to pray in Jesus' name as believers. As believers. Jesus says, I'll do whatever you ask for me in my name 
so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Over time, there have been a few lessons I've learned about praying in the name of Jesus. First of all, I learned it is very personal. To pray in Jesus' name is very personal. I learned this in a sermon preached by David Cranford of Colonial Heights Baptist Church in Jackson, Mississippi. I wanted David's name to go in here because I want to give him the credit for preaching a sermon when I was sitting on the front row, like where Cody is sitting here. I was sitting on the front row by myself, and David preached a sermon on praying in Jesus' name. And for the first time in my life, and I was a pastor, for the first time in my life, it broke through to me how personal it was to pray in Jesus' name. Now, why did it break through? It broke through because of David's definition of praying in Jesus' name. And here's his definition. Praying in Jesus' name means to throw your whole life after the will of God. Now, that's praying in Jesus' name. Throwing your whole life after the will of God. And I remember uh, David used this illustration. He said, if you've lived a godless life, if you've never lived for the Lord, you've never spoken to the Lord, you've never cared about the things of the Lord, and all of a sudden a tornado is coming toward you, and you get down on your knees and say, Lord, save me. He said, that's a vanity prayer. That's a heretical prayer. You don't mean that. You had not lived your life for the Lord. You had not cared for the Lord. You don't listen to the Lord. You don't obey the Lord. You do what you want to do. And it's a vain prayer to pray when you're in trouble and you hadn't been living for the Lord. That's vanity. Need, need to be praying for forgiveness of sin. And I learned from that sermon by David that it is a very personal thing to pray in Jesus' name. It means, it means more than just with my lips. It means that I everything that I'm doing and thinking and the money I'm earning, the hours I'm working and the family I have, I want all of that to go in Jesus' name. I want it all of it to go in the same direction. I don't want my business to go in that direction, my family in that direction, my social life in that direction. I, I, I want it all to go in Jesus' name, a very personal thing. When we pray in Jesus' name, it means throwing our whole life after the Lord Jesus, our business, our finances, all, all we have, all of our time, throwing it in Jesus' name. So I learned it's a very personal thing to pray in Jesus' name. Secondly, I learned it's a very controversial thing to pray in Jesus' name. I was entering pastor of First Baptist Church, uh, Quincy, Florida. And Pat Thomas, state senator from Quincy, asked me on two occasions to come pray in the Florida legislature, Florida Senate, to open the Senate. And on one occasion, I, Jerry May and the children probably remember, uh, most of all because Pat said I'd reach, won't you come this day because it's Ray Charles Day. So we're honoring Ray Charles. And uh, we had, I was down front there with Pat and Ray Charles and others. And uh, they uh, honored him, Ray Charles Day. And uh, he had lived in Florida for a good while, from Georgia, I think, originally, but lived in Florida a good while. And uh, he was getting ready to leave, and they wouldn't let him leave. They made him sing right there on the floor of the Senate. They brought a piano out there on the floor of the Senate, and, and he sang. Uh, I was glad to pray in the Florida Senate, but when Pat asked me to do it, he surprised me with something. He said, now, Jerry, if you pray in the Florida Senate, here's something you've got to do that might be new and unexpected. You've got to send your prayer 48 hours in advance. Send your prayer, write your prayer out, and send it 48 hours in advance. Now, there was a good reason for them doing that. What they did, they then took that prayer and printed it on a plaque, and the date that it was prayed in the Florida Senate by whom and where and so forth. And then they gave the prayer a copy, a plaque. I have a couple of plaques at home of that. But there was something else Pat said that surprised me. I was a pastor. I was interim pastor, First Baptist Church, Quincy. There was something else Pat said that surprised me. He said, now, Jerry, I'm not going to tell you how to pray. You're a preacher. 
I'm not going to tell you what to pray. You're a preacher. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If you pray in Jesus' name, if you say in Jesus' name, we'll be there for two hours with that bunch, I'm going to tell you like he told me, from South Florida fussing about it. They'll get on, there are a bunch of them. There's eight or ten of them. They'll get on the floor and they'll argue and they'll fuss and complain that somebody on the Senate floor is praying on Jesus' name. And he said, and we'll get behind in our business for the day. He said, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. If when you finish praying, if you say in Jesus' name, we're going to be here for two hours listening to that bunch. I prayed both times in the Lord's name. In the Lord's name. You say, well, I would have prayed in Jesus' name. I, I, when you pray before the Florida Senate, help yourself. I felt like I was praying in Jesus' name when I prayed in the Lord's name. I was trying to keep down controversy. I was trying to keep down a problem for the Senate. But I learned it's controversial. Everybody's not throwing their life after the will of God. Everybody doesn't care about the will of God. Some people are opposed to the will of God. I could have named you a handful of senators at that time that they, they would have nothing to do with God or the church. And complain about it if you did. So I learned that praying in Jesus' name can be controversial. Now thirdly, I learned praying in Jesus' name can be an opportunity to witness. It can be an opportunity to witness. And I learned this in the Alabama House of Representatives. I was interim pastor at First Baptist Church, Geneva. And the uh, state representative for that area was in the church. You mentioned you're from the Geneva area. You might have known him. And uh, he asked me to come and pray an open session at the house. And I told him I'd be glad to. I'd be honored. Now, he was a member of First Baptist Church Geneva where I was interim pastor. I was a Sunday school teacher. And I mentioned to him, I said, well, you know, I've, I've, I've seen this movie before. I said, I, here's all I want to know. Can I pray in Jesus' name at the Alabama house? And I'll always remember what that Southern Baptist Sunday School teacher, state senator, told me. Jerry, I'll be, I'll be disappointed if you don't. Pray in Jesus' name. You see the contrast? One says, don't even think about it. And the other one says, man, I'll be disappointed if you don't do it. Praying in Jesus' name, praying in the Lord's name, is an opportunity to witness Praying in a restaurant. You don't have to pray in vain. You don't have to pray for show. But praying in a restaurant can be a witness. I've got a good friend, a mutual friend of Rollins, myself, who's a banker. And uh, he, he never liked to pray much at the restaurant. He, he just didn't like to do that much. We went out to eat one night, and he said, let me pray tonight. And I said, whoa, go to it. And he prayed a prayer of thanksgiving to the restaurant. And he said, let me tell you what happened. He said, my wife and I were eating out a couple of nights ago. And this man came in with about five children and his wife. He said, he looked like maybe probably a putwood hauler. He said, he looked muscled up, pretty big, and dressed like that. He said, do you know what he did before they ate? I said, no idea. He said, they prayed. And he said, do you know what I thought? If he can do it, I can do it. And you know what? You can do it. In Jesus' name, bow your head and pray. It's a witness. It's a witness to the waitress. Uh, Jeremy and I went out to eat last night, and we were talking to our waitress, and uh, I asked her if she, you know, knew the Lord. And she said, no. I said, do you go to church? She said, no. And uh, I said, well, have you thought about going to church? And she said, well, my folks are Catholic, I guess I'll claim to be Baptist. I was thinking, well, you don't go to church, you're going to claim to be Baptist. I said, go for it. Uh, but I mean, look, there's a world out there that needs any kind of witness we can give them in Jesus' name. And we said to her, we're praying for you. We wish you the best. She's a young lady. We wish you the best. But living in Jesus' name helps us, and it's good for us, and we think it'd be good for you. Fourth thing, I learned... To pray in Jesus' name is very powerful. 
And I believe I learned this from the Holy Spirit. It's very powerful. I've seen circumstances where I was beyond anything I could do. I've been in situations where people said, Preacher, I've got to have some help. Here's where I am. I listened to their story and I realized there was nothing I could do. Nothing I could do. I've known, him, I've known people get in trouble with the law. I've known him people get in all kinds of squabbles and difficulties. I've known the people to get in all kinds of illnesses. And they would talk to me. And I would realize immediately there was nothing I could do. And it would always dawn on me, yes, there is. In Jesus' name, I can pray for them. In Jesus' name, they're in trouble, but I can pray for them. I can pray for them. I've visited people in local jails, state prisons, and federal prisons. And I've learned something. I can pray for them in prison. I can pray for them when they don't even visit them in prison. In Jesus' name. And people that are ill and hurting and have difficulties, I can pray for them. I can't, but Jesus can. Jesus can help them. In Jesus' name, pray for them. It's a powerful thing. You're taking the hand of the Lord Jesus in your prayer life and saying, Lord, I'm praying in your name that you'll help this person. I'm praying in your name that you'll heal this person for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what are some reasons that makes praying in the name of Jesus so important? Number one, we are admitting we cannot handle the circumstance. We are admitting we cannot handle the circumstance. Many times life will throw things at us and we can't do anything about it. I've known people to tell me, not only am I worried about this, I'm cried out. I can't even cry anymore. I've had people tell me, preacher, I've cried and prayed about this so much, I can't even pray anymore. You say, well, that's odd. I don't know. They're hurting, man. They're hurting in the deep part of their soul. And they're saying, I can't even pray anymore. We're admitting to God we can't handle our circumstance when we pray in Jesus' name. Secondly, we're submitting to his will. We're submitting to his will. We're saying, Lord Jesus, not only do I pray with my lips, I want to get involved in this circumstance. I want to be involved in the life of others. I want to pray for life for others. I want to care for others. I want to help other people. In Jesus' name, help me to do that. Submitting ourselves to his will. I can assure you it's the will of God for every life in here for us to pray in Jesus' name and pray to be a help and a witness to other people. Thirdly, when we pray in Jesus' name, we're representing the work of Jesus here on earth. When Jesus was here on earth, uh, we have uh, about eight recorded prayers of Jesus in the New Testament. Now, there are about 25 times when it said he prayed but there's only about eight times that we have the prayers of Jesus. Some are as short as 10 words. The longest one is John 17 chapter, whole chapter. By the way, when Jesus prayed in public, he prayed short prayers. When he prayed in private, sometimes he prayed all night. Now go figure that out. Short prayers in public, long prayers when he prayed to the Father privately. And when we pray, we're joining and representing the work of Jesus here on earth. He's gone to the Father. Oh, he's interceding, but he's with the Father. But here we are on earth, still involved in his work, praying in his name, and we're representing him when we pray in the name of Jesus. Number four, we partner and pray with Jesus in seeking the will of God. The night before Jesus died on the cross, why did he pray in Gethsemane? Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Did he pray one time and then let it go? No. The Bible says he prayed three times. The same prayer. Lord, if it be your will, let, let this not happen to me. I don't want this to happen to me. But Lord, not my will, but your will be done. He saw the cross. Lord, if, if it be your will, that let this cup pass. But not my will, but your will be done. We partner and pray with Jesus in seeking the will of God. And fifthly, we're asking God, when we pray in Jesus' name, we're asking God the Father to take action. We're asking God, get involved. Lord, we need your help in this circumstance. 
this person I'm praying for needs your help. Uh, this morning at breakfast, I told Jerry, I, somebody was really on my heart this morning, somebody really in need. And when we had prayer at breakfast, uh, we have prayer at meal time, and then we read the scripture after a meal and, and have prayer. And just one person was really on my heart this morning. And, uh, and I think that will come to us sometime. A lot of needs, a lot of people. But sometimes one person can just get on your heart for a few hours. What do we do? We take it to the Heavenly Father because he'll take action in Jesus' name. Number six, we end up praying God's perfect will to be done. Not his permissive will. His permissive will is, Lord, I'm going to do this today. That's his permissive will. His providential will is, Lord, I'm going to do this today, and I want you to help me. That's his providential will. His perfect will is, Lord, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do today? And when we pray in Jesus' name, we end up praying God's perfect will to be done. And seventhly, we recognize Jesus as our constant prayer partner. Our constant prayer partner. I, I went to, uh, I attended uh, Southern Baptist School. Two, I attended two Southern Baptist schools and uh, never had a prayer partner. I went to Vanderbilt University, private school, went to Vanderbilt University, my postdoctor work. Guess what they did the first thing I was there? They made me get a prayer partner. Would you believe that? At Vanderbilt. Uh, I found it interesting. Now, they assigned me a prayer partner. I didn't choose one. They assigned me one, a pastor in Nashville. Uh, Jesus is our prayer partner. You say, well, I've been praying by myself. No, you haven't. He's right there with you. He's right there with you. He's praying. He is interceding. He is our intercessor. He is our intercessor. A friend of mine was president of Florida Baptist Convention a couple of years, and I remember uh, Ed told this story. He went to a church. He never. He was pastor of First Baptist Church, Ocala. But on this particular Sunday, he'd gone to this church to visit. And... Uh, he went to a number of Florida Baptist churches when he could since he was president of the convention. And uh, on this particular Sunday, he went to this church, and he said uh, it was a large church, wonderful church, wonderful pastor. He said the, uh, he and his wife came in. His wife's Hilda. They came in. They sat down, and the pastor got up in a little while, and he said, yes. That's all he said. He didn't say welcome. He didn't say how you doing. He got up, and he said, yes. He said the congregation, the whole congregation, repeated it, yes. He said the preacher said again, yes. And the whole congregation said, yes. He said the preacher said the third time, yes. And the whole congregation, yes. He said the preacher bowed and prayed, Lord, you heard our answer. Now tell us what to do. Let's bow our heads, please, in prayer. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Will you say yes to Jesus? Say yes to Jesus. Maybe he's dealing something in your life. Holy Spirit's doing some office work in your heart right now. Say yes to Jesus. Trust Jesus. In Jesus' name, trust Jesus. Trust Jesus with your problems. Trust Jesus with your circumstances. Trust Jesus with your soul. Trust Jesus with your church membership. Trust Jesus in your faithful service. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus with your family. Say yes to Jesus. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, in just a moment we're going to sing a hymn. As we sing that hymn, it's an invitation hymn. We invite you to respond to what the Holy Spirit would have you to do. If you need to come forward just for prayer, I'd be glad to pray with you and you can go back to your place. If there's some public decision you need to make and we need to share with the congregation, you, you trust in Christ as your Savior and following him in baptism and church membership. Are you finding a church home here with us? Uh, you, you do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Our fathers, we sing this hymn to the glory of the Lord Jesus. We say yes to you in Christ's name. Amen.